First of all, shout out to anyone who thought I was genuinely an AI. You can't make an AI of this, come on. Everybody knows that. No, I'm kidding, obviously, but I'm not AI, okay? I just didn't have a setup. I kind of set the studio a bit now. Got some lights, got the mics. And yeah, I'm feeling good. We're going to be back on a video sometimes, not always. Sometimes I won't be in the mood. Whatever. Now, this was supposed to be a video about uh, an MCP stack that um, could scrape anything. However, I while making the video, I was talking about Bright Data, who have um, kindly agreed to sponsor the channel. So shout out to Bright Data. They're an integrated sponsor. Whenever I'm using either proxies or need to scrape something or whatever, I'll be using Bright Data just because I think, first of all, I would have used them anyway. And second of all, I just found out that their MCP is actually way better than I actually realized. So I was originally making like a video about like an MCP stack, right? Using fetch, open router, all that stuff, right? But I actually found out that Bright Data's MCP is completely different to what I thought it was. Now I associate Bright Data with proxies, but they're actually not just proxies and their MCP is extremely interesting and I think people will be extremely interested in it. Now, let me talk about one of the kind of problems with the original MCP stack. You needed to use Brave and Fetch, right? Because you can't use Fetch to scrape URLs that you don't have, right? So you need a list of URLs. There was no connection between these two things, which is okay, it works fine. But Bright Data, what they've done, and this is super, super interesting, is they have search engine, right? So scrape search results from Google, perfect. URL title and description. Scrape as markdown, scrape a single page as URL with advanced options for content extraction and get by the results in markdown language. Scrape as HTML. Web data Amazon product, right? This is where it starts to get super interesting, guys. Quickly read structured Amazon product data. Requires a valid product URL with slash DP in it. This can be a cache lookup, so it can, it can be more reliable than scraping. Now, one of the problems with traditional scraping methods, and even something like fetch, right? If you, if you feed an Amazon URL to fetch and you tell it to return as HTML, probably your, your computer will explode, right? Or something, it'll be so, like the amount of, like Visual Studio Code will freeze 100%, I promise you, right? This is really, really interesting because you have search engine, right? Where you can search anything on Google and it will come back with a list of URLs. But then you can then also scrape those URLs. And if they're Amazon products, right? Because you put site, colon, Amazon, whatever, you know, in title t-shirt, because you're looking for t-shirts for whatever reason, right? You can then all of the results will be Amazon results and you can scrape them automatically. This is super interesting to me. This is a sponsored video, okay? What well, kind of, they're an integrated sponsor. I'm just introducing that in this video. However, now that I've actually seen this, this is actually super, super interesting to me. Web data Instagram profiles, very, very cool. Read structured data from Reels, Instagram comments, Facebook posts, Facebook market listings. Oh, damn. This is actually a game changer, holy crap, this is super interesting. Because again, if you think about it, all of these things rank on Google, right? If you do site facebook.com, and then let's do um, maybe slash listing, I guess would probably be how they do it. No, so um, I, don't know, I don't know exactly how they do their, uh, I, I don't use Facebook market, oh, maybe slash marketplace actually. Marketplace. Yeah, here we go. So like, there should be some kind, look, you could scrape this page, right? I don't know what you're looking for in wherever we are in the world. Murray, Kentucky, right? But let's say you want to find, you know, vintage cars, right? But you don't want to scrape through everything. You want to find vintage cars that are on here at a discount, okay? You could easily scrape, I think, I haven't tested this, but so this is for listings specifically, right? So you'd have to scrape this page first and then you'd scrape each of these pages one by one, I believe. Very, very interesting to me. Very, very interesting. There are some things here. 
I can't really talk about them because they're other people's ideas, but just think about AI arbitrage. That's kind of what we were talking about on the, in the school community this week. We were talking about AI arbitrage. I'm not even going to write that word because I'll just spell it incorrectly. What that means is a way to um, bridge the gap between two either buyers and sellers or whatever it is using AI and then profiting the finder's fee. Right, just think about that for a second, because there's money in that. I'm telling you, there's money in that. This isn't your typical make a hundred million in two weeks using AI video, but AI arbitrage, connecting buyers and sellers with AI. I'm telling you, there's money there. Okay. Web data, YouTube video, scraping browser, navigate. Okay, so this is like uh, um, the browser use thing. Okay, so. I'm pretty sure they're going to add a lot more features to this, okay, as well. Now, let's test this out a little bit. Let's see if we can make it do something useful, okay? So, I'll think of an example, but first of all, installation. Guys, I've been over, I overcomplicated MCPs. They're much easier than I thought they were. Basically, all you have to do, I'll show you this right now, is all you have to do is find your client settings uh, .json folder, right? F copy... Sorry if you can hear that dog barking. Copy the um, the location of the settings file. Feed it to client and say, add this MCP to my MCP settings, right? And then you just copy this and paste it. And make sure you say you're on Windows or Mac or whatever. Tell it to read your file first to make sure that it has a good understanding. You don't actually have to add anything to your computer. I didn't realize this. I've been overcomplicating this for, for months now. So I apologize to everyone for that because I actually didn't realize how easy they were. The reason being, if it's using NPX, right? NPX, if you don't know, it's not a manager, it's a runner, okay? And what that basically means is it, it, it physically, when you, when you run a command, it adds files to your system, I believe or it like adds a temporary one or something. I'm not exactly how sh it might run it in the cloud or whatever. I don't exactly know how it works, but it, you don't need to physically add any files to your system for MCPs to work. I didn't realize that. All you need is node. And if it's using MPX, all you have to do is add this to your settings, to your client settings or Claude settings with the appropriate args, right? So for example, I'm on windows, so it needs to do a slash C arg, which I think means run or something. I'm not really sure what it means. But as long as you have all those things and you tell client that you're on Windows, it will most of the time install an MCP for you, right? So now we can start a new chat and now have the MCP that I wanted, which was the Bright Data MCP. I will turn everything else off and we'll see what this can do. Now this should replace Fetch. This, should, this could also theoretically replace Open Router Search, but I think I will still use Open Router Search because I... I feel like their prompts are good and I don't necessarily have the best prompts. So one thing I recommend when you get um, a new MCP is you get all of the commands here. Let's just go back into the chat from before and I'll say, can you make me a handy readme file to come back to, to know how to use this MCP, all right? And then we'll feed this, um, feed the, all of the possible tools to uh, client, right? So now it will make this. And now we have our handy readme file, right? If we leave this open, so let's just close all these and then we'll reopen that one. If we just leave this open on our system like this, client, I believe, already has access to it. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, so look, what we can do is we can use search operators. I, I'm, I remember using search operators years ago. I've talked about them on the channel before, but basically if you can find the combination of what you're looking for, which in this case is a single marketplace item, right? You can do sitefacebook.com slash marketplace slash item or whatever you're looking for, right? It doesn't have to be Facebook marketplace items. And from there, we can now scrape the search results using part of the MCP, right? So use the bright data MCP search engine option with this search. Um, and then we'll put um, keyword, replace keyword with vintage watches. 
Nana watches cars. I'm looking for vintage cars. Then we can then use um, this one, web data, to scrape the re results and put them in a CSV. I'm looking for good deals on cars on Facebook. Let's just try this. This is just an example, right? There's many, many other different things here. You can, you know, get um, hotel listings from booking.com, which is pretty interesting, actually. So let's also approve this and approve this. Okay, that didn't work. It's actually right here, bro. I hate MCPs sometimes. There we go. I used the wrong thing. Okay, so let's see. So this is what I was talking about before, about your computer will freeze if you scrape the wrong thing. This does happen. Oh, nice. I actually got the results here. This is pretty cool. Okay, so we'll approve this. How is it going to scrape this, though? Because if it scrapes this just HTML, this is going to be problematic, I think. Okay, so there we go. There's the response. These are not vintage cars. I hope it picks up on that. Collection of vintage cars, yeah, but I'm not looking for... <laughs> okay, whatever, it's fine. And then we're putting that into JSON, right? So you can see how you could make something like some kind of AI recommender or like AI deal finder or AI buyer that buys things on Facebook Marketplace automatically. You know, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just, I'm really actually quite impressed by this MCP. This is not what I thought the MCP was. I thought the MCP for some reason, well, not for some reason. Bright Data for me was a proxy service, but it looks like they're going down a slightly different route here. And I actually really, really like this route that they're going down because I think things like scraping Facebook, scraping Amazon, scraping LinkedIn, scraping whatever is super, super interesting. Now, these are all just, these are not vintage cars like I meant, but that's fine. 20 bucks for all. Yo, I'd pay that. <laughs> 20 bucks for all of them, eh? Oops, wrong thing. And then you could make something that automatically messages people. 22 weeks ago, it's the same one. You could make something that automatically messages people. You could make something that, you know, you can really do a lot here. One thing I know as well is that these guys are locked into this. So they're probably going to keep adding things. I reckon they'll add eBay, they'll add... Uh, other things as well. If anyone's got anything they want me to ask them to add, feel free. We're in touch with them. If anyone wants something specific here, let me know. I think I'll leave the video there, guys. This is super, super interesting to me. This isn't the video I thought I was going to be making today either. Um, but this actually just replaced my entire MCP stack with one handy dandy tool. And it hasn't actually spent um, like 0 0.01 as far as I can see just yet. So, I mean, that's pretty cool as well. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that expensive. Now, it might be. I don't, I just, I haven't tested it fully, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be that expensive either. So, yeah, I mean, this and Context 7 is now basically a complete MCP stack. You could use this instead of Context 7 as well, but I do really, really like Context 7. I think I'll continue using Context 7. Might continue using Open Router as well, just because of the way um, that it works. I actually do really like it. But with these two plus the Bright Data MCP, you're pretty much completely unlocked in terms of what you can do. And you could also just leave this going, right? This would scrape, this would then scrape more search results on a search engine, scrape more things, et cetera, et cetera, until infinity, basically. Okay, I'll leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. You're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.